<laughs> that's my that's my manager. All right. Oh, hello, manager. <laughs> okay, we're good, manager. we're good now. We're good now. All right. Anyway, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to a very special stream. Uh, I'm your host Joey, and today I am with three lovely, talented individuals um, who are all part of the B Stars Dubcast. Uh, so I guess we'll go through one at a time with introductions. Uh, <laughs> let's start off with Jonah. Hi, my name is Jonah Scott. I voice Legoshi in Beastars, but I also voice other Netflix shows as well. I'm Tatsu the House Husband in Way of the House Husband. Um, I'm Johnny Bolt in Super Crooks. Um, and I voice uh, Aiden Caldwell in Dying Light 2, which is a game that just came out, and a bunch of other ones. Go check out my BTVA uh, or IMDB, either one. But who's next? Uh, let's go Griffin next. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Griffin Puatu. I am deeply closeted and uh, violently <laughs> oppressed but i'm so happy to be here uh <laughs> i uh i voice a variety of people i voice louis in the cast of b stars i voice uh i don't know other other people i'm sure uh and uh, i'm happy to be here awesome Two thank of those you things were, were alive by, by the way <laughs> <laughs> well we'll never know which one it is uh and Maybe by the end of the stream he'll tell us yeah Hi, everybody. I'm Lauren Landa. I am the voice of Juno in Beastars. I'm also the voice of Merlin from Seven Deadly Sins, Annie Leonhardt in Attack on Titan. And I hope you guys are watching the final season of Attack on Titan because it's absolutely wonderful and intense. Uh, I'm also yeah. the voice of Sailor Neptune from uh, Sailor Moon, uh, Female Robin from Super Smash Brothers, Karin Kanzuki from Street Fighter V. Uh, Kyoko Sakura from Madoka Magica, and a lot of others. Damn. So we have yeah. three voice actors here with an absolutely stacked uh, background. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to finally meet and talk to these lovely people. And uh, I hope uh, you guys will stick around for this cool interview. Um, so I guess to start off with, I mean, I call this an interview. <laughs> it's mostly just like us shooting the shit. I mean, that's we're just that's, vibing. It's just we're just it's just a vibe. Chilling and vibing, man. Chilling and vibing. We go for the cliche questions first. So how'd you get into the industry? Yeah. Well, how I do mean, I get voice into voice acting? acting? I mean, look, <laughs> what's like, it like working with Jonas Scott? Is he really as funny in real life? No, no he's, <laughs> he's not. He's terribly boring. Go downer. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no. you, I, I kind of feel called out because that was literally my first question. But all right, anyway, hey, we I, I just, we've we, never I, done any of these I, before. I, I, yeah. had shot, sh boys. I had to, I had to just like, like put a knife in one of your tires. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, just... okay, Let, let's just, let's just like get the ball rolling, just in case there are people who are watching this uh, who possibly sure. might have never heard of you guys. Uh, so sure. I guess let's just start with the super fucking cliche question of. How did you guys get started in voice acting? Who wants to go uh, first? I, I'll go. I feel like I feel like I've been here the least. I feel me and Griffin started about the same time. I we think. we started the same time. We uh, yeah, we we had we had coffee and fell in love. Uh, we uh, and I I think we. It's been a beautiful, you know, we did what beautiful we had relationship to, to watch. It really we did what been. we had to do to get to the top, and we don't make apologies for it. Mm, yeah. That's, <laughs> I, yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of funny. I, I actually, um, studied musical theater, uh, in college. Oh, and okay. I got a degree in musical theater. So I'm a, I'm a singing, dancing, acting anime man. Um, and I didn't, I, I, I wanted to do theater. Um, but at the same time, I realized that theater is a huge time commitment, mm. massive time commitment. Like the majority of your hours of your day go to the theater um, especially if you get rehearsals and you have things called the thing called tech week, which is an entire week where you basically just put a cot in the backstage and you're, you're rehearsing the entire week and doing lights it's and broke. sound cues and things. Mm. Um, and then I realized that I <clears throat> love video games. I used to play league of legends semi-professionally. I was an AD carry. I was a, a top main. I, I played jungle off. Um, and that was where a lot of my hours that weren't doing theater went. And I was playing video games one time with my girlfriend and I was playing Titanfall and she's like, Hey dude, you sound like Jack Cooper. You sound like the Titanfall guy. You sound like Matthew Mercer, who it was. Mm. And, um, I thought to myself, I didn't realize until that point that like <clears throat> somebody got paid to go in to do that. Like that was an actor's gig that I, I thought, you know, I don't know what it was. I didn't have that. The, the, there was still the, the veil in front of me where it's just like, these are characters and it's just characters. And I didn't, I didn't know that there was a whole production that went behind it. 
Um, so I tried it out online while I was still doing musical theater stuff in college and I was pretty successful at it. People liked it. Hmm. Um, I made more money doing that than I did working at the deli <laughs> that I worked at making sandwiches all day. Yeah. Um, and, uh, then I was like, maybe I can do this for a living, but then in order to do this for a living, I have to move. Hmm. Um, so I graduated, uh, I had $200 in my pocket and I moved to LA and I slept on another dub actor, friend of mine, uh, and writer, a very talented guy, Jalen Cassell. I slept on his floor for an entire I year. You slept on him. No, I, I mean, <laughs> ended the pro probably pretty... at some point. Like, I mean, we, we, I slept on his floor um, on a broken futon for a year. He was writing the dub for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure it, for, for, for a time frame. He was writing the dub for uh, Stardust Crusaders. He was writing the dub for Berserk 2016. <laughs> he was writing wow. the dub for Iron Blooded Orphans at the time. Damn. So uh, that was that was when I was like living on his floor. Hmm. Um, then I started, you know, I, I took classes. It took a while for me to, you know, establish myself in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, I really wanted to make dubs super cinematic and good. That was my like my uh apotheosis i guess my 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 uh thesis was like i want to go in making dubs sound like a movie hmm. i want to go in making dubs sound really uh cinematic and real and grounded um because i was listening to like other dubs and i'm like you know what this sounds this sounds cartoony and i, I could probably ground this a little bit more mm -hmm. um but then i booked uh my I, I started working for for netflix for a little bit i did like tiny bit parts i did walla i did background vocals i did you know mm silly little things until people started to trust me and then they trusted me with legoshi as as one of the leads um and then from there things just kind of started to snowball and we're still in the middle of that snowball right now yeah yeah, yeah. but um i like to think that since uh you know since I've, I've 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 taken a few few gigs uh my the dubs that i'm in are pretty cinematic and i feel like i do a, i do a good job yeah definitely so I, was, I definitely agree i that, got yeah. started voice acting nice I've all, I'm also a streamer too. Like uh, that's that I neglected that entire thing. My uh, video games are what I want to do for a living. Right, right. Voice, voice video games. And uh, I streamed before I was like a voice actor. I would stream video games, and I still do to this day on Twitch almost every day. Voice uh, actor and I'm professional an gamer, artist. Jonah. Yeah, voice <laughs> actor and professional video game player, Jonah Scott. Nice. You can see by my Secret Labs chair, I am a professional <laughs> video game player. Hold on, hold on. Like two hold on. I'm not I'm not sponsored by that, so I don't I don't know if that counts on this stream. Oh, this isn't a sponsorship. <laughs> on not the paid. Wrong this stream. is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> it is gated to me. Um yeah, that's super cool. Um what about uh, maybe go Griffin next? What about you? Well, it started off with a deep seated need for attention. I grew <laughs> up in a family of uh a family of five kids and it was a constant battle mm -hmm. and I won I'd like to think uh it's ongoing because they're still alive <laughs> um but we'll see we'll see how it works out yeah. um no I, I was always performing as from the from the time I was really little uh I would like I'd quote lines from movies in character voices I I and I, I just did it automatically mm. and um ended up doing musical theater and singing throughout my life started taking it really seriously in high school and college uh Realized I didn't want to go into uh, computer science. Um, it just wasn't the grind I was interested in. Because again, I, I I was so obsessed with myself that I uh, I went on and did uh, acting and got to explore that and um, ended up uh, in a couple of bit roles and uh, a couple of tsunami shows. And then from there, moved out to LA in 2017 and haven't looked back. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, yeah. That's the that's the truncated and uh, silly uh, explanation of it. So. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, what about you, Lauren? Uh, well, much like um, my lovely friends here, I also started in theater. Um, uh, musical theater was a big part of my life. That's where I started. I've been an actor my whole life. Um, I've also been doing this for about. Uh, <clears throat> 15 years now been doing it for about 15 Damn. years now uh it's it's been a minute uh and uh you know i start off as an actor that was trying to get through college um i was trying to i thought i'm gonna get a theater arts degree and that's gonna help me get acting jobs <laughs> no uh <laughs> uh it might uh it might help get you a teaching job as mm. far as like you know acting goes but not so much anyway um 
so that led me to take uh, voiceover workshops. And I met Tony Oliver, who uh, is somebody that all three of us know and work, I'm, I'm sure work. me some Tony have, Oliver have worked with yes tony's wonderful uh Please you guys off please, please. <laughs> you you guys might know him as the voice of loop on the third the original loop on the third mm. as far as uh, and also rick hunter from robotech um but he uh he saw uh what i could do he saw that i was pretty good at it so he wanted me to audition for a show and then a few months later i was cast in magical girl lyrical nanoha which was my very first show and if i listen back to it now I cringe, um, <laughs> but you know, cause it was my first show. We all suck in our first show. Like all of us do, um, when we're just starting out. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so that's where I got my start. And then that just went from one thing to another. I have been really fortunate, um, with all the characters that I've been cast as I've been in shows on Crunchyroll, Netflix, Funimation, Toonami, um, it's kind of crazy. And also I, I also stream on Twitch, but I would not have started streaming were it not actually for, for Jonah. There and it Jonah, is. I just, <laughs> the I just recognition. Got, I, just got a I, I just got a message from Ben. Oh no. <laughs> I'll, I'll t- sorry. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so yes. Um, I wouldn't, st- I wouldn't have started streaming if it were, were it not for Jonah, because Jonah was actually the one like Lauren, people want you to stream. And I'm mm. like, Jonah, nobody's going to give a shit about me streaming. If I'm not playing video games, it's like, no, you don't get it. People actually are fine with just chatting with you. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I mean, that's I exactly know. what we're doing right now. And people are, are loving it. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was, I, uh, Jonah was a big part of that. Uh, and he's uh, been a wonderful supporter of that. Uh, so yeah, you can you can thank him for getting me to stream, y'all. And I and I've loved streaming. I've been streaming now since August of 2020. So certainly not as long as uh, Jonah or Joey, but mm. uh, you know I'm getting there. So <laughs> oh, as long as you're enjoying it, that's that's the most important part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. Um. Okay. Yeah. Um. So now that everyone has kind of figured out where we've all come from uh i guess we can just get into the meat of things and talk about uh the 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 show of in question which is of course b stars um jonah's rocking like a really oh. sick like b stars hoodie oh i don't what know is, i was, yeah, I'm all, is, I was uh, rocking oh yeah oh yeah everyone's rocking a b stars thing listen yeah. listen oh, we're gonna, to, talk, we're gonna show swag listen, i got fucking okay hold on i have a museum of b stars listen there. listen i was going to wear a b stars hot topic shirt but here's the thing T-shirts don't look as good on me as they do these two boys. So I'm just saying it's We're like boys. Listen, no. I have an exclusive item. This was from Jonah's uh uh stream yeah. about two we years ago. Oh no one else has was that from yeah. a Jackbox stream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No one else has oh this. God. Yeah. Well, That's first of all, of kind. first of all, I wanna I wanna read the message that Ben sent me, and it's it's to Jonah. Oh. oh. And it says Tell Jonah to book the lead of whatever the next Persona game is going to be called so we can all call him Per Jonah. <laughs> I, yes. If you would like to tell PCB or whoever is doing the next Persona game to send me an audition, that'd be fantastic. Yes. We're going to manifest it on this stream right now. Manifest. Yes. I hope I hope Man- Atlas is in. listening. <laughs> Atlas, Atlas, if you're, yeah. if you're watching the stream, you uh, there you go. Atlas. <laughs> NIS America loves me. And yes, I did too get the memo. I just chose not to honor it even even so... i even i honored it i i have a little like lego she shut up right jonah uh. or joey i'm sorry not jonah <laughs> oh, joey is that? Isn't it cool? <laughs> little lego she one right here a little go she <laughs> but uh yeah i don't have anything near me but it's fine it's fine, it's fine. You, we, we, can, we can pretend Hashtag we can pretend jonah for persona. <laughs> <laughs> i can amazing. get behind that uh but yeah uh so i guess let's like jump into b stars um i guess first yes. question i want to ask is did you guys know anything about b stars before you got the role or heard about getting the role i did not i did not know anything about this show uh <laughs> i didn't know anything about this show and i didn't know um how big or popular it was mm. i went into a session and um Bob Buckholtz, who was the um, lead director of the show, uh, along with his daughter, Megan, uh, Bob said, OK, so this show is called Stars," And I swear, I said, Bob, what kind of 
what kind of show are we doing here? <laughs> like, you know, like what kind of, what kind of show are we doing here? He's like, it's an anime. It's about animals. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And Such a good Bob uh, impression. <laughs> he's a very meat and potatoes guy. He right, is right. very much so. And so uh, he said, well, you're, you know, it's about a wolf that, uh, you know, there's, you know, it's a, it takes place at a school where they're split up between herbivores and carnivores. And, you know, the carnivores can't eat any actual protein. Like they can eat, well, they can eat uh, other sources of protein, like tofu and, mm-hmm. and I don't remember what else, but, uh, you know, and he says, well, it's about this wolf named Legoshi, who is a carnivore and he falls in love with a rabbit and, and you you play a wolf named Juno, who's also really into Legoshi. And I just got really excited because I, I love wolves. I mm. absolutely love wolves. Um, so I was very excited to play a wolf. Um, I, I believe I, I am what you might call furry adjacent. Anybody who denies that Robin Hood from Closeted. the original Disney Closeted movie is, is not hot it. is wrong. And you are lying to yourself. What, what, what was that? Christian? I said closeted would be the correct term. <laughs> closeted. <laughs> I can admit it at least. Um, but yes, so uh, I was, I had no idea that it was that popular, um, mm. but, and that was, and I had no idea who was going to play Lego. She, but um, Ben Disk. The voice nobody was, really did. Cause I didn't well, exist. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, and that's really cool because I'm pretty sure that it was Jonah's first lead anime yep. role. So uh, anyway, sorry, that was my answer. It's just, I had no idea how popular it was. Yeah, yeah. I loved, I love playing Juno, so. I knew. <laughs> I knew, I knew, knew a lot. Yeah, I was, did um, you read the manga or? Yeah, I, I, uh, after we, me and actually Jalen, I lived, when I was living with Jalen, we, we, we watched it together. Um, and I was like, oh my God, it's, he's such a cool character, but you know, Matt's probably going to play him. Mm. <laughs> like we, we, when you, right. when you work in the industry for long enough, you have like, groups of people that you could throw at certain characters and be like that there is a you know, nine, to one odds. Right, yeah, right. nine to one odds this person's probably gonna get at least an audition for this character mm. and nobody knew who i was at the time so i just kind of wrote that off um i read some of the manga i didn't get too invested in it um and then i got cast uh bob kind of was screwing with me when he told me how i got cast because he told me in a session he didn't email me or anything he told me i was doing a session for as dub actors um we do other things we do cartoons we do <clears throat> video games but sometimes to pay the bills you got to dub live action stuff and mm. sometimes that gets a little boring um and it's tedious work uh you try and put a, a emotion into it as much as you can but i was dubbing a live action thing mm-hmm. and it was tedious and I wasn't really, you know, engaged in it. And then Bob walks into the 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 booth and is like, "Hey, Jonah, you booked the thing." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, "You booked you booked the dude in in the show." And he mm. was being super vague on purpose. And uh, I was like, "You need to be a little bit more specific, Bob." Um, so eventually, he's like, "You booked the wolf. You booked the main guy." And I that turned that super mundane session into one of the most memorable of my life. <laughs> uh because and now and now jonah and bob have this relationship where jonah will slip certain things into the anime that wasn't yeah. there to begin with mm. <laughs> so... yeah bob lets me put all kinds of easter eggs and thing uh he, he knows i know the fandom and he trusts me uh so yeah. he he's like i'm like mail mode was a one particular thing in the in the manga that everybody liked because lego she said mail mode and it's that that phrasing that syntax that everybody really hung on to yeah yeah, um, yeah. and i when you're when you're doing a dub to some extent, especially if you you enjoy the source material, you kind of treat the manga as the Bible, um, mm. as like a holy book of some kind. This happened in a lot of Attack on Titan, too. Um, there's just certain phrases and things like that that you just have to get in there. And I, I told him, like, mail mode is one of these things that we have to say. So we, we spent probably 15, 20 minutes trying to figure out how to make that work with the flaps, which is another uh, hurdle... Somebody's getting arrested. Another hurdle that we have to jump over as dub actors is like making sure that that fits the flaps. Because a lot of people I see uh, online are just like, why didn't they say this? It says this in the manga. It would just make mm, sense, right? Yeah. But it's making that make sense and making that look like it makes sense. That's the hard part. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, I, I was able to do and put all kinds of special kind of Easter eggs. And I do that. And I'm sure Griffin does. Uh, with all the shows that we're in, we, we, we try and we pander to the fans as much as we can. We want yeah. you guys to enjoy these. We don't go in mm-hmm. trying to make a bad dub. We always go in trying to make the best show we've ever made in our life. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, do, do you agree Griffin. with that sentiment, Griffin? Or 
I listen. I'm trying. I'm sure I do it for myself. So you know, I'm trying to have the most fun I can He's have. He's still leaning into this, uh, huh? No, let, listen. No, hey, I, if it's good for me, it'll be good for the fans. No, I mean, I, I knew how big I knew how big the show was, uh, and I was very excited because the fan art was really hot, and uh, and I could finally have something to be excited about in that regard. Yeah. Because uh, all the shows up to that point, I was like, Beyblade, ooh, can't be excited about fan art about that right and i was like oh b stars nice 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 uh and the fans have been wonderful they're all very sweet uh and mostly tame um and Pun um, intended? Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah getting into the show it was definitely uh I, I think i was drawn to the character more than uh than anything else mm. uh i remember watching the show and being like "Ooh, i don't like this guy and i think that's when it clicked for me i was like oh if i get in this show this is gonna be the the character I have to play and I'm going to have to like get over the, the, my personal uh, frustration with the character. Cause the show is so, mm. so well set up for you mm. to be behind Lego. Um, yeah. and Louie is sort of definitely an, um, an antagonistic, um, <clears throat> presence, especially in that first season. So, um, yeah, I think Joan and I both knew we were, what we were getting in, in what we were in for. And, uh, we both, uh, talked a lot about it and wanted to make it, uh, make it as special and as good as we could. Yeah, I th I like I think as well. Um, like Jonah brought up like the mouth flaps, and I think one I guess like unique aspect about uh B stars or rather I guess anything done by Studio Orange is that like how the anime is made, it, a lot of it or I guess most of it is like rotoscope. So the mouth flaps actually match oh, the original voice yeah. actors, right? So like unlike a lot of other anime where it's you know just like two frames of open mouth, closed mouth. Um, you know, which is a little bit easier to, I guess, voice over. I guess, like, what were the challenges going into that kind of dubbing versus, like, the standard regular mouth flaps? I'll, I'll take I'll take a bite of that question. Shh, go um, for it, Jonah. The, uh, the, it, it, it's kind of hard to, to, to say because it is meta, it is physically and, and mechanically impossible for us to get it exactly right. Mm. Mm. Um, in in a flap show where it's just open close open close maybe maybe an o shape or something like that it's a lot easier because mm. it's it's just math you just like this is how many syllables they say and this is how fast the syllables are yeah. but griffin in particular is very very good at doing that stuff on the fly as the director um it's a lot of what we did especially me and bob and working on working as legacy it's great when you have mns mouth not seen you can just act your ass off mm. and that's fine as long as you're in the time it's great However, I don't want to say I abandoned the flaps completely and then just focused all on performance, but I focused way, way more on performance in this show than I did making the flaps work. Right. Because a lot of the time I, I had a really, really good take and it just didn't fit the flaps. And we were just like, all right, we're keeping that because the spirit of this show is theater kids, you know, being kind of melodramatic you know, really, really uh, leaning into their feelings. And if it doesn't fit the flaps 100%, fine, you weren't going to watch it anyway, right? Mm. If, you, if you weren't going to watch it for the flaps to fit, you weren't going to watch this version of the show anyway. You want to watch the dub for the performance. Yeah. You really do. And besides, you've already seen this show. It's not, It's been on Netflix. You've seen it already. Like, you, you, it's it's... We focus more on the performance in this show in particular. Mm. There's uh, every other anime, again, that's open, closed, but flaps are just, we're going to make the math work. Yeah. But I really leaned hard into, you know, making this cinematic, grounded, real, uh, feel meaty and visceral. And, and, and there was a lot of, there was, there was breathing. You could, Lego, she breathed through his nose, mm. through his mouth. You don't get that stuff in other, sh in other dubs. You're not allowed to breathe. In, in, in most anime, if you move, you make a noise. In this it's really down to earth. It's, mm. it's not as turned up to 11. And I feel like that's something that's super unique about this dub. Um, yeah. And there's is, a lot of, there's a lot um, in the show that's very particular, more than just lip flaps. There's more, there's a lot of physicality in the show that we, uh, Jonah and I, especially uh, in that first season wanted to get down. Right. We, we had rehearsed a couple of scenes in person because there's such a, uh, because the show was motion captured uh, mm. on a set and recorded in, in, in that manner, uh, a lot of that came out in the performance. And um, a lot of what I was aiming for in um, in my performance as Louis was just a precision on the physicality. Because again, the lip flaps are going to be what they are and, and, and as best as they can. Um, 
our, our directors and our engineers are going to line it up so that it works. And if, if there's a closure, meaning the mouth closes at the end, we're going to have a word that ends there. If it hangs open, it'll be something with a vowel that hangs open. Mm. Um, so, but from our perspective and, and what I was really trying to do was just, you know, cause Louis is so precise and so, uh, uh, rehearsed in mm. how he acts, it was really locking in on his, uh, physicality and how he moved, uh, where he, how he was leaning in his chair and, you know, how he walked up, uh, where he pushed, uh, Legoshi and, and so on and so forth. And then how that tr changed in season two, when he's almost taking on a completely different role of this yeah. mob boss, it's much more, right. um, slick and sly and, um, and very Godfather-esque. So, um, yeah, that, that, and, and it's so cool. Cause like Jonah said, unlike other anime shows where sometimes you'll just get flap open, flap close you don't get much in terms of like character movement, how they stand, sit, move, uh, be stars yeah, yeah, way true. more physical and mm. way more like what, how they move and what they're doing. Translates so much weight to, to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm. It translates to how you play it and how the Japanese played it and then how we play it. So, um, and it's nice. It, there's, I mean, so many of the scenes are so physical, uh, Lauren and my scene when we're dancing, mm -hmm. uh, well, all, what all two, two or three of them, like there's so many, so much of the movement and the physicality of the characters has to do with the storytelling and the mm. acting as well. So um, also, my... I want to go back to mechanics really quick. Um, <laughs> it's funny. It, uh, if, if, as, as Griffin and, and Lauren, we all work on anime almost daily and mm. we see anime from every studio almost daily. We see anime across the, from Japan, the different animation styles from different countries. And I'm going to be very honest nobody really cares about the flaps <laughs> because <laughs> even when you're even even the japanese sometimes it comes over and we're like that was like eight syllables off you were working on a on a on a like a um what is it uh, a storyboard right mm -hmm. it's like even the voice actors themselves didn't get to see the final product um as they were doing it so uh performance uh, across the board is something that we should really focus on um mechanically i just let the directors and the engineers tell me what to do longer shorter longer shorter whatever you need to do pause here pause there mm. but um the flaps are not my problem the flaps are the engineers and the director's guide that's what they need they need to tell me what to do right right so, right I, I know i probably pissed some people off saying that but what it needed, <laughs> needed to be said <laughs> oh no no i mean it's completely understandable like it is you know very difficult to to fit that mold perfectly and as you said you know, right. I think uh, I think it was you know at, at least for for me as as a viewer of uh, both the original voice and the the dub that you guys did like I could definitely see that like you know I think both uh, versions the Japanese versions and the English versions definitely do use a lot more like I guess I don't want to say like traditionalist voice acting techniques but like it's it's very like almost not anime voice acting if that makes sense because the right. show itself is so like realistic in a sense which is very weird because you know you're following a bunch of very non-realistic looking characters who play very realistic roles um and i think mm. that's like i don't know at least to me that's like one very cool pulling point of b stars for a lot of people is that yeah, yeah that's a good point you know the show looks so strange with these anthropomorphized animals and yet they are some of the most like human characters that we've seen in that's anime what in I personally love time. about it. Yeah, that's that's what I personally love about the show. And I think, you know, many people have come up to me and said, I really want to watch Beastars, but it just looks so weird. Like, mm. it looks a little weird. And I'll be honest with you, when I first started watching it, I was like, I don't really know if I like this or not. But then immediately, right. I think the first scene that drew me in was the scene where Lego, she sees Haru for the first time and when he you know mm. his wolf instincts go into like carnivore mode mm. and he tackles her and he's holding on to her you know I don't know what it was about that scene but that you know him having that internal monologue of you know his carnivore instincts trying to kick in mm. that's truly what drove me into the show like it truly just made me fall in love with the show because of how intense it was and how gorgeous and beautiful it was mm. um but at first i was like i don't know how i'm gonna react to this so i understand when people come up to me and they're like i really want to watch Beastars, stars but i don't know it's a little strange and i'm like trust me you will fall in love with it yeah. because it's just it's such a gorgeous show it's a gorgeous yeah, give it the show. three episode test yeah give it the yeah, three exactly. episode test. episode two gets weird but you got to watch that third episode exactly and the, and the well and also i feel like if the performances in the dub were not good mm. um 
I don't think people would as, be as drawn to it, but I think that the, the, obviously the dub performances are quite lovely and I think they're amazing. I think Lara mm. Jill Miller as uh, Haru is amazing. She's wonderful. Mm. And, the, and go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, and Jonah and, you know, Jonah you. as Lego, she is just, it's perfect. And Griffin as Louie, it just makes me fan myself every single time, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's ridiculous. No, Louie, Louie is definitely one of those characters that I'm like, oh, he's great. I love Louis. Like mm. he's a great character, incredibly complicated because he's, you know, he was traumatized as a child and, and all of that. And there's just so much stuff there. There's mm. so much stuff there. Um, and I just love how there's always a struggle. If you think about it, a lot of the characters that are featured are going through some sort of struggle oh, yeah. um, within themselves. And I think that's a, I think that's what really makes it very interesting. Mm. It's an ensemble cast that really, there are some shows that some anime that have ensemble casts where you get a little bit of, of other characters, but they're still a main character. But this ensemble cast, everybody gets a little there's there's an entire episode that's dedicated to another character in season mm -hmm. one that they have an incomplete arc you know and that's what i think the definition of ensemble cast is it's less about lego she and more because you already know lego she's story it's more about the people around lego she and how they interact with him mm -hmm. right and they all get their own spot in the sun they all get their own time they all get their own scenes <laughs> it's it's fantastic I, I i love everybody who's in the show and the writing in season two is some of the best writing I have seen in anime. Mm. Uh, not from a mechanical standpoint, but from a poetic standpoint. It is almost shit. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. You know, be hyperbolic or anything. But mm. it is. It is Shakespearean. It is. Mm. It is lyrical. It. It flows so well. And mm. um, I go back and listen to some of those scenes sometimes. And and Maddie Morris knocks it out of the park with a lot of the writing. Uh, good friend of mine. Um, she, she would come to me when she was writing and be like, is this something that you feel Lego she would say? Is this something that would come off your tongue really well? This was engineered. We we really worked hard on this, especially season two. We really worked hard on this. Yeah. And I think, yeah. And I think that only just speaks as well to just how well written the original manga is as well. Like Itagaki yeah, Padu oh, sure. has an incredible sense of like, you know, just, uh, yeah, as, as you were saying, Jonah, like just the fact that it's not just one character that we follow and then there's other people who are just kind of in the scene where it's more like it's it's the fact that the side characters build upon the main character and if it wasn't for the right. side characters the main character would nowhere be near as interesting as he actually is exactly. and uh yeah i really want to read the manga but i but i am just i'm i, I haven't read the manga because i don't I want to be surprised. Mm. I want to be surprised at what happens in the anime. I'm, I'm um, going to go pee really quick. Oh, I'll yeah, of back. course. Yeah, very no Jonah of me, but... <laughs> very Jonah. Yeah, the very manga Jonah. is uh, the manga's fantastic. Um, it's it's written by Itagaki Paru, who is... Uh, do you guys know Baki? The the anime or manga? Baki? Right, How gr old gr is it? Griffin knows. Uh, it's, from, it's, it's a very old series. It's like 30 years old. But uh, Netflix uh, recently made like an anime adaptation of it. Mm -hmm. It's like very 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 good uh anime uh but i don't know if you know griffin but uh itaki padu who is the creator of b stars is the daughter of the creator of baki oh no i didn't know that yeah so itaki keske who's like a legend in the manga world he, who created baki um so the creator of b stars is itaki padu who so she has basically been the the daughter of a, one of the most prolific manga artists in japan so you know she wow. definitely has learned a lot from her dad, I think, in terms of just, like, how to build great characters and how to just kind of create something unique and interesting and, you know, very unlike any other manga series out there. And, yeah, I mean, like, you know, Studio Orange did such an amazing job bringing that to life. And then, obviously, you guys did an amazing job bringing that, that to life in English as well. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think... feel like it's a perfect storm of like production and like artistry. Oh and yeah, things like that. Definitely. Yeah. I think I think everyone who was involved in the entire process like really just brought their A game and made for a fantastic, uh, fantastic series that everyone loves. And like, yeah, as uh, as Lauren was saying, like it 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 does kind of suck that it does take a little bit of like tooth pulling to like get, get some people into it because. Of just how like right. conceptually weird the bravery looks. test, you know? Yeah, are you, it is. are you a bad enough dude to sit down and watch B stars? Because if you're not, you can get out. 
the, you know what the, I mean? Well, the, like, uh, the you argument... Really participate in the conversation. Yeah, right? the argument I hear a lot is, oh, I don't want to be, like, perceived as a furry. And I'm like, dude, if liking Beastars makes me a furry, I'll happily be a furry. Like... Oh, 100%. Hey, dude. I yeah. wasn't kidding. I wasn't kidding when I said for those, for people out there who are like, nah, I didn't find Robin Hood hot in the Disney movie. I mm. didn't find him hot. They're lying. <laughs> They're flat out lying. Like, I don't think when I'm Nala wrong made on that this. face, you didn't go... You didn't, you didn't, you didn't get a you little, like, I can get it. It was like, oh, <laughs> no, I'm not wrong. I, you know, it's like, it's like, come on, man. It's like, just g be honest with yourself. Exactly. You owe it mm -hmm. to yourself to be honest with yourself. And also, even if also it does, you know, even if you're that concerned about being a furry, which is ridiculous, yeah. but if, but, but the fact is, is that it doesn't matter. It's a beautiful show and these are beautifully drawn, uh, or not drawn, but animated animals, like an anima, uh, I can never say the word. Anthropomorphic. Thank you. You're Anthropomorphic. Right yes. But, oh, it's just so gorgeous. It's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely. Um, and I love Studio Orange. They are just. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. yeah. They're great. Yeah. Everything they've done is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess like one question I want to ask uh, before we jump into some of the Twitter submissions uh, is... Who is your favorite character in Beastars that's not your own? Um, you know the right answer, think. Jenny. You know the right answer. <laughs> There's a lot of different ones. I, I would say... I want to say, like, Bill. Uh, the, the The tiger. The tiger. Mm. He's, he's probably one of my favorite characters. He has a, he has a nice little arc. Um, Pina. Tina's uh, wonderful. Tina's mm. fantastic. The scenes, Kaylee and I got together and rehearsed some stuff, but um, before before we actually recorded, which again, me and Griffin did, and that's unheard of. You, you don't do that in anime. You that's just not something that happens. This was a very very important thing. So Kaylee and I like we we had conversations, um, and some of the scenes that 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 we're in together are on my demo reel. Like they're hilarious. I I love them. Yeah. Um. She, she just sounds, brings such life to Pina. Oh my God! I just whenever I hear her Pina voice, I just I drool a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's it's ridiculous. Like she did an amazing job as Pina. Mm. Um. So yeah, Pina was just a great character to begin with. So yeah, definitely. Uh, Griffin, what about you? I haven't uh, said my name. my favorite character outside of Louis would probably be Kibi. I like <laughs> Kibi's. Uh. He'd I like good. him in season one, and I love his little arc in season two. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just nice. Um, I think, and yeah, mm -hmm. kind of like what you what we were saying in the previous question. What's nice about a series um, is that the story is so protracted and so stretched out that you can see all of these different stories weave together, and it really builds um, the 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 world, and it really kind of sews together <laughs> like the conflict uh, from multiple different angles and how people deal with. Uh, being a carnivore versus not, and so on and so forth. Mm. And, uh, yeah, that was one of the. Well, just, I mean, Br Bryce does such a wonderful job as that character too. It's not a typical <laughs> character <laughs> I hear role. from Bryce. I know, right? And that's why I really liked it. I was like, oh, it's really cute, and uh, and he's and he's very sweet and very kind of unassuming. Uh, I yeah. feel bad for him though, <laughs> because yeah, of what happens of in season two. But he's fine. Yeah. He's fine. He's, you know. fine. he's, he's fine. fine. though. He's good. He's um. <laughs> I honestly, I, I, I sound like a broken record, but honestly, uh, for me, it's Louie. Um, I, I'm very okay. drawn to Louie as a character. Um, and I, you know, and I love Legoshi as well, but I love That's how- not, All right, you know, let's- it's, it's all right. <laughs> You're like, you why did you have to go into that? You don't have to pretend, Lauren. It's okay. It's okay. So, so Louie, uh, Louie definitely is a character that I'm very drawn to because- it's just very, first of all, it's very interesting to me to see, um, you know, from a, from a perspective of, it's just funny to imagine a deer being the most popular boy in school, but then <laughs> in the same token, it's, he's just, he just has this complicated life and he's constantly, I feel personally, I don't know about you, Griffin, but I always feel like he has, he's always dealing with this battle within himself. Um, mm -hmm. because of all of the trauma that he's dealt with and, and what he wants to be. And he doesn't want to be perceived as this weak herbivore. And I just, I just love, I just love how angst he is. <laughs> so <laughs> I think, I think that's why I'm drawn to him. Um, but yeah, Louis probably Louis and, um, oh my gosh, her name is escaping me. Um, <laughs> I love the chicken. 
<laughs> the, or the head. Oh, leg arm. Leg arm, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. She's so cute. I just love it. And also, Jonah makes the best egg salad sandwiches in oh like, sh- do go on <laughs> oh my gosh they're so good they're they're ridiculous but yes so louis louis is my answer what about uh, you Joey? Mention, what about you oh yes go ahead uh, honorable mention haru you know the deuteragonist um i laura jill miller was a wild card pick yeah. um she hasn't she hadn't done anime in a while she hadn't mm. done she's mostly done um like you know cartoons and like you know stuff that pays rent like <laughs> and then uh like she came back because because bob bob just tapped her and good lord couldn't picture anybody else now uh-uh at all she's so good she sounds I... so good and we I mean, we just have such chemistry it's great yeah, she has a wonderful voice Vocal for Hadu. Yeah, like, Lara. A wonderful voice for a bunny rabbit. Lara, Lara voiced uh, Chirithi, right from Kingdom Hearts, I think. Was that her? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, I know her from that. Yeah. And Kari mainly, and Digimon. Right, mm. I was gonna say, but mainly people know her as. Kari. Oh yeah, right. Of course, yeah. Um, so, but she was great. I, I mm. love, I love how high her voice is, and just it's crazy. That's how yeah, tough she, she sounds too. I, oh, wow. I love it. I just love it. Damn. Um, I guess if I were to pick, uh, other than you three, uh, I I probably have to say. I'm gonna, go- echo, I'm gonna echo Griffin here. Don't pretend. It's okay, Joe. <laughs> no, you no, don't no. Have to I, no, I love I love Legacy <laughs> Louis and uh, like Juno is like best girl for me in in the series. I don't care what anyone says. Like everyone picks oh, Haru. Yeah. I think I think Juno is so much of a better character. Um, but uh, say I, that louder for the chat to hear. Yeah, Juno <laughs> is best girl. All right, don't pretend. <laughs> <laughs> um for me i'd probably have to say gorhin just because he's such a badass like he is. i mean yeah he's he's like a yeah. he's like a eight foot panda brick shit house. like you know how could you not like yeah. him we we call him panda daddy he's panda, 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 daddy. panda daddy he's panda daddy yes for real yes. yeah he's absolutely panda daddy and like he pulls through so hard for legacy as well and he's like oh, yeah, oh man clutch yeah when he like rocks up with the with the crossbow i'm just like my man yeah right <laughs> <laughs> isn't his diet like bamboo Doesn't he just he eats eat, bamboo like, yeah bamboo? he works out a lot he, yeah oh, he's, he's like you don't you don't have to eat meat to get powerful i just eat bamboo and i'm a brick shit house and i'm like hell yeah, yeah dude. i eat bamboo and i'm fucking rad <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so good it. but yeah i honestly like it's 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 beastars for me is one of the few shows where i literally don't think there is a single character that i dislike just because Every single character, even the ones that are like super minor, are just so well written to the point where they it's like to be there. That's the that's the thing. Exactly. There it, there there isn't a character that feels like it's just there to fill the space, which I think a lot of anime does, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um. But yeah. Uh. I guess now we can kind of jump into. I asked uh a bunch of my fans over on Twitter to ask some questions. Oh, let's fucking you guys. go. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm I'll, ready. Yeah, I'll try not to, I'll try not to make ones that are like too like yikes. Uh, luckily, uh, <laughs> luckily though, uh, most of them were pretty good. Um, okay. We got a question here who says, uh, from Shana who says, what did you find the hardest aspect of voicing your character? Did you feel you had to enhance certain emotions to make them come to life? Uh, even more, uh, than for example, a human character. That's a really good question. That's a good question. Um, go for it, Jonah. Go for it. Okay. Um, not particularly. This was well. This was my first lead role. I have mm. never done this much anime before. I had come in for two sessions max for a show at for a season at any given time. I was a three episode villain in things, and I was like a two episode, one episode character that shows up and then leaves and and, and other things. And I've never done anything that had this continuity to it, this arc to it, this big, huge, like 12 episode, 24 episode arc. Right. Um, So I wanted to, as an actor, have that arc. I wanted there to be you know, this is this is level one Lego she. This is level two Lego she. This is level three Lego she. All the way up to like ten. Um, and I wanted there to be a change. 
because a lot of anime dubs that I watched, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge anime fan. I have been since like uh, middle school. Um, a lot of the dubs that I used to watch were the characters and the voices felt to me fairly one note. It was, it was always, there was never a whole lot of growth. It mm. was, this is the voice of this character and that's just how it is. I wanted to lend a little bit of humanity to it and have Legoshi grow over the you know two seasons that are there. So in the beginning, Legoshi will sound completely different than he does at in episode 12 of season two, you know? Um, and there's this large uh, fight that he has within himself. Um, he's going through puberty at the same time. And this was really something that was cool for me because as somebody that just played those three episode villains, those one episode, you know, uh, impromptu characters, um, I just had to do the voice. Now I had to do the voice and the personality, and I got to sit down, and as the actors say, I got to sit down and do the work. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to sketch out this arc that I had in my head. I got to read the manga and actually sit down and figure out what's going to happen in the story. Because I knew that the I knew that because of this 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 show, they would be accurate to the manga and they would take care of their fans and they would make sure that everything was that way. So I could research and plan and and sit down with writers and you know do this little like skunk works in the background with my friends mm. to make sure that this came out the way we wanted it to and uh that's something you don't get very often i mean i think we'll the, point the this last out. time i will well, point this out about jonah really quick i just got to cut you off for a second jonah jonah is honestly one of the quite literally one of the most dedicated voice actors that i've ever oh met God. <laughs> and and i mean that because no no i'm not i'm not kidding so many people a lot of people wouldn't go through that jonah a lot of people mm. are very much like i'm cast as this role i'm gonna go in i'm gonna do my best um i'd be lying if i didn't say you go you don't you go you don't go above and beyond because you do you do go above and beyond no. so i'm just pointing that out uh sorry i didn't mean to cut you off Continue. <laughs> no that's good uh thank you very much um, but yeah, that's, that's just what I wanted to do. I, uh, since I moved out here, you know, I, I kept telling about uh, saying about, I want to make anime feel more real. I wanted to make anime, uh, more uh, able to be digested by a Western audience. Um, you know, because a lot of the anime that you see, like it, it, it feels stilted sometimes it feels for lack of a better term, dubby. Mm. And that's something that, you know, a lot of the time you have to get into production to fix, um, but if you know the people in production, if you're friends with Griffin and I worked, he was a direct, he directed me on several things. Um, we, 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 we work together well because we've worked together before. Um, an example of this, that's not B stars would be Akudama drive. Mm. I knew everybody in the Akudama drive cast. I knew everybody in the Akudama drive production line. And if we had a problem with something, we could bring it up and we didn't feel weird about, we didn't feel we were going to lose our job uh, trying to make this art. We didn't feel like we were going to be, you know, looked down upon or not get the next gig or not be told to come back just because we all work together so well. And um, again, season two, people coming back for season two of Beastars, they realized like, oh, this show is important to people. This show is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So everybody came back and absolutely brought their A game. And uh, please just go watch the show. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I I got to do I got to do the work as an anime dub actor, which is which is very very fulfilling and cathartic. Mm. Griffin. Next. <laughs> <laughs> um, the hardest part about playing my character. I, uh, funny enough, it was actually um, uh, a lot of things lined up uh with me and louis in both seasons funny enough uh hmm. but especially the first one to where um playing the character was almost like um like in the moment deja vu if that makes sense like uh in the first season louis like very early on in the season louis dealing with an injury and he's in a lot of pain and he's trying to kind of like swallow it down and hide it uh while i was recording um i was um i was quite sick and i had a lot of uh aches and pains and um I was struggling to like stay focused and to stay like like razor sharp and I was getting kind of frustrated with myself and then as I'm kind of like Ugh, you know doing that and then seeing the picture and seeing that I'm like oh Louis is going through the same thing right now mm -hmm. like so I'm I'm getting upset at myself for getting like not being as sharp as I I would be or I could be or should be but Louis is doing the same thing so um there was a bit um there was a bit I I 
I guess the challenge with Louis was more coming to terms of with the, uh, the 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 parallels um, more than anything else. Sometimes it's easier if a character is nothing like you, yeah, or is a bit out there that you can kind of just like um, you can kind of jump into it and be like, oh, this is fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I've never jumped into this pool before, right into the deep end. But like when you walk, when you like see a u-shaped hole in the wall to walk right through it's a little like it's you a little unnerving zip your heart to play this character yeah mm. yeah for sure and and i think that was the hardest part was just being like okay like uh this is eerie and then season two was very uh was was it was a similar experience i think uh louis was trying on this different personality and trying to distance himself from the the <clears throat> people he had been around thinking he didn't need them anymore and uh there was parallels to that in, in my own life and kind of being like, huh, okay. Like, um, and just, just being comfortable with that was really the, the challenge. Cause again, like it's, it's easy to jump into a character when you, when it's not you, uh, yeah. but it's harder when you start, you start kind of confusing you, what you're going through with what they're going through. And uh, it's, um, it's weird. It's almost like, putting on clothes that fit too well you're like mm. huh mm. something it's something in, for a in bit, theater yeah. acting yeah something in theater acting that really helps with the um get into character is you put on the costume and now you feel the weight of the character and it's like ah, oh, mm. i'm a different person now but i'm but if but i'm imagine putting on the costume being like i don't feel any different i feel the same i feel yeah. like it, it's 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 kind of that was sort of right, the challenge right. i went through with uh with louis but yeah Oh, cool. I just noticed a com. I just noticed a comment in the chat by a mutual friend of all of ours, um, uh, Moo Crow. Oh, Moo, Lauren, Lauren, come back to us. They didn't want it. They didn't want her to finish that. <laughs> no, they, they got fucking docs. Oh, we're back. We, okay. We. Oh. Oh, are we good? You're back. Yeah, you're yeah, back. you're okay, good. Okay, you're good. Continue. Well, Chris I'm here. Said what? I'm here. I'm here. Moo Crush said, "Gotta remember, B Stars came out right in the beginning of the pandemic." Which funny story. Uh, we had a viewing party. Oh my god! Yeah, the day for the first lockdown. season, the day before, or a couple of days before lockdown. Was it the day before? Oh wow! It was, it was, the, it was the day, day before. before for my lockdown. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, it was right before, literally right before lockdown, and um, it's crazy. A lot of us were think- like, "This is the last time we're probably gonna see each yeah. other for a while." For a while, and and we were all very kind of crazy and brave, and we were like, "Let's just do it and hope that we're gonna be okay." <sighs> And, uh, you know, and then, and then funny enough, a year later, we had another viewing party for Beastar season two. Mm. And that one we chose not to stream because the first time we tried to stream it, it was just like, you know, we just kind of wanted to watch it as a group and Come not on, have to worry stream about Netflix. So mm. we're going to have the audio playing and you're going to have to count down with us to make, yeah, it's a pain. Right. It oh yeah. Pain. So, yeah. So, That's a pain. You know, um, but as far as the actual question goes, um, you know, I don't really, the only thing that I wish I could do with Juno, I mean, I love playing Juno and she's, she's so much fun to play, but the one thing that I wish I could do is kind of play her a little more grounded, I guess, but with Juno, she's a little, she's a little up there. Mm. Um, one of my favorite scenes in particular is, is <laughs> Jonah and I call it the mouth scene. Um, the mouth scene where Jonah, I'm sorry, Lego she, oh my God. <laughs> Where Lego she has to look into Juno's mouth to measure her bite. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it is, there are innuendos all over that scene, and it is so funny. And Jonah, I now I don't know if this was in the in the script or if you guys made it up, but at some point, you know, Lego she's looking into her mouth, and Lego she all of a sudden says, Oh yeah, just hold it right there. And it sounded absolutely just so That dirty. was one of those perfect <laughs> Oh, this is an MS line. I can say whatever yes. the fuck I want. That that was <laughs> that was definitely the one scene that converted everyone to furryism. Like uh, you know, that that was that <laughs> was the that Jonah, was the we're tipping point. We're responsible for turning people I into wouldn't furries. Have it any other way. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. But that was so much fun. But I also that's one of my favorite scenes, but my other Well, I have two, but the other one that I absolutely love to this day is the scene um, between uh, Juno and Louie in the first season where she kind of starts to dominate him a little bit. And she flat out says, you know, I think you hate me. And you know what? 
you don't scare me. I don't care that you're the most popular guy in school. Mm. I'm going to be the next B star at this school. Not you. It's going to be me. And that's kind of one of the few scenes that we actually see a whole different side to Juno. Yeah. And beautifully done. And I think I'm pretty, we're so excited about that scene. We were really stoked hmm. um, on how it came out and to record it. So yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as enhancing her voice, I, I don't think I have anything on that. The only thing I wish I could do is just make her a little more grounded. But if the scene doesn't call for it, the scene doesn't call for it and you can't yeah. force it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure eventually down the line, maybe in like season three, uh, there'll be moments where Juno comes out a little more grounded. So hopefully yeah, there's a lot of arcs so. that have a really good denouement in season, in, 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 in a hypothetical season three. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some good stuff. I guess uh, on and a that, lot of, oh no, sorry, go oh. on, go on, go on. Oh, no, you I, keep like drop, I keep dropping out. I don't know you're why good, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what were we saying, Joey? I didn't mean. To oh, no, 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 no. I was, I was going to, uh, were you going to say something? I was just going to say a lot of people ask us this, so I'm just going to go ahead and get it out of the way. Hmm. We don't know when we're recording Beastar season three. Hopefully we will, but we don't know anything about Beastar season three. Okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you, I'm glad there. you said that out, out, outright because the next question was going to be, what are you looking forward to most with regards to season three? Uh, but <laughs> considering you guys have no idea what's coming in season three, the answer is they don't know. <laughs> Well, well, no, we can probably answer that in hopes of things, but I'm just saying a lot of people say, when's season three coming up? We mm. have no idea. We don't know anything about that. We don't know. I hate to say, oh yeah, we're definitely going to record because you never know. Mm. Anything can happen in between recording seasons. And I hate to say it, but sometimes it can happen and sometimes it can't. Yeah. Now, obviously it's, it's looking obviously more than likely that we are going to do season three, but we don't know when. Um, yeah i mean as as, as what, a yeah. yeah as a manga reader i know what's coming up in the story um and yeah. i'm very excited for it because it's a very big shift in uh okay. in, in storytelling so i'm hoping that uh they nail season three and you guys nail season three i'm looking forward to all the fruit especially melon oh I yeah melon melon. <laughs> melon is uh melon's gonna be an interesting one i'm, I'm gonna be interested to see who gets cast for that actually uh you have a well, doorbell what someone in chat our vo literally just read my mind somehow and they said i can't wait for season three to see more juno and louis scenes i love them oh, that's yeah. what i'm hoping for i am honestly i don't know what's going to happen and please no spoilers in chat i haven't read the manga um but i honestly am looking forward to more juno and louis connecting mm. um, if there's going to be a romance that blooms Hold between them i have no idea but that's what I'm hoping for for season three. Yeah, so. I think uh, I think if if they can if Studio Orange continues to go, uh, you know, and uh, go the route that they did for season one and two, and you know, just bring everything about the manga to life in the way that they did, yeah. then I think season three is going to be very good. Uh, yeah, <sighs> fingers crossed though. Fingers crossed. Yeah, no 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 spoilers in the chat. No spoilers in the chat. But you know, we if you know you know. <laughs> Exactly. If you know, you know. Yeah. It's okay to not say it. So yeah. Yeah. Um. I guess the next question we got uh is from Aman Ogawa who says, "What would you say is your respective spirit animal?" Since we're talking about animals. Oh boy. Wolf. Wolf. Mhm. Mm I mean, respectfully, I... respectfully so because I know that finding your spirit animal is actually very special and very yeah, that's ceremonial a, that's a thing steel and, and i don't want to cultures. disrespect that in any way of course, whatsoever of course yeah so um but yeah i would i would say wolf mm -hmm. so i have voiced uh lego she um i voiced aiden caldwell who was also uh it's called the lone wolf he's got a lot of different names i voiced raiden Shuga in 86 mm -hmm. he is the werewolf of the group so I feel like a wolf is is, is pretty. <laughs> I think pretty in line all signs are I... pointing to wolf. <laughs> yeah, all signs point to wolf. Noticing me. a pattern here, yeah, Jonah. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Griffin? And Jonah, Jonah may or may not. I mean, if we ever get to it, Jonah may or may not be playing a werewolf right. for me at some point. Oh so. right, yeah, we have a yeah. little thing going. Mm-hmm. So nice. What about you, Griffin? You're stuck playing wolves, Jonah. <laughs> yes, Griffin. <laughs> oh, Griffin. Griffin. You... Yes. 
Uh, what, what do would you, you have? A, do you have a spirit animal? animal you like? What's your favorite animal? What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Is it spirit animal or favorite animal? Spirit animal. Spirit animal, but you can answer both uh, if you want. <clears throat> penguin. Penguin. Pangolin. Pang penguin, not oh, pangolin. Penguin. <laughs> penguin. Penguin. Interesting. Penguin. Huh. Yeah. Why, why would you say penguin? Dapper. Uh, the wings are useless. They're, what they're built for, <laughs> they cannot do. Uh, they're very fluffy as children, and then they're terrifying as adults. Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. There you go. Makes sense. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, next one we got here is from Jeff, who says, uh, "Before you all became voice actors, who were some other voice actors you looked up to and drew inspiration from?" Oh boy, here we go. Oh, ones who haven't been canceled. Once. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's funny because is it is it a lie? Preferably <laughs> not. They, Preferably those that are in good terms with everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. All right. Cool. <clears throat> Who wants to start? Notice the silence that just settled in because we now All right, have to I'll go first. <laughs> um, All right, it's true. Matthew Mercer is mine. Uh, he, I've never met the man in my life. Um, I would you like will. to at some point. You will. You will. Um, I'm sure. He's a huge inspiration to me. I, I, I've rehearsed in the shower many times what I was gonna, what I would say to him. Um, but I, I, I have a feeling that I would just trip over my tongue I was and gonna say. be like, "You good, cool man, shake hands." Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's a, he's a huge inspiration to me. I, I want to emulate him in in, in uh, many ways. He's uh, also a beautiful human being. He's also yeah, oh, yeah. He's a, he's a beautiful a, human being. Speaking mm. of people that will never be canceled, Matthew Mercer is is, is one of those people. Um, another actor uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, th another one I never met in my life, Roger Craig Smith. Uh, he's he's fantastic. Um, I, I I play Aiden Caldwell in Dying Light Two, and he plays the protagonist in the first game, mm. uh, Dying Light One. He plays the the main character, and uh, a lot of a lot of what I did in 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 the second game has been heavily inspired by him and a lot of his 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 roles and things <laughs> like that. Um, but I kind of put my own spin on it. But uh, Roger's another uh, vocal icon that I look up to, and uh, I guess for a like a third, I don't know maybe wild card pick let's see sites maybe patrick sites he's he's pretty cool i like patrick sites he's amazing he's a cool guy Griffin, huh? what about you um I'm trying to think uh i don't know i uh I mean, I could list off a, bu a bunch of people who inspired me in a lot of different ways. I don't have a particular name in particular. And I just knew that I wanted to do what these people did. Mm -hmm. I think once I realized that, like, um, oh, this is a job. Like, this guy in this show voices this guy in this show, and I can hear it. Uh, maybe want to go, like, how do what, what is that? Like, how do they even do that? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm always looking at... Um, I'm really interested to see what like some of the younger people are up to like mm. um oh gosh uh i gotta think of names now uh <clears throat> and uh shoot this is where i need to like bring up credits of stuff and be like that person but um <laughs> <they're>... <laughs> hang on hang on i'm actually i'm don't don't worry they're gonna kellen goff Kellen Kellen Kellen's really... one of those actors that I look up to too. He's he's what he what is one of if not my best friend. We he's a fucking meme lord and he's, <laughs> he's one of my one of my best friends. But um, yeah, there's a lot of I I was very I, I booked a creature voice recently and I went to Kellen with my audition after I booked it and I'm like listen to this am I can you give me a thumbs up am I good am I good and he's like yeah buddy you did a great job. <laughs> there you go. I got I got my validation from Kellen for creature stuff. So yeah, <laughs> Kellen's got a voice that you can never really. Uh place it's very unique and he and he always has a unique angle on characters uh i really like what um what aj beckles is doing uh he's an up and cover is really 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 great uh luis bermudez <laughs> is really really talented um gosh who else um yeah i mean we work with really 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 talented people i'm getting to be a director i've really gotten to see uh just what people can really do mm. um especially when when they're given the opportunity uh I think once some of the angst we feel in the industry is um, being pressed for time and having to just like just just do the job, just get it done, uh, and only being able to do as well as we can in those that kind of circumstance. So <laughs> it's nice to be able to open things up for people and go like, no, no, like I'm going to push you and we're going to try and get this right. And um, and 
Yeah, but um, COVID yeah, gave I just, me the opportunity to work with a lot of like people that I've never worked with in my life. You know, mm. like Funimation. I, I I got to work with Funimation exclusively <laughs> because I because of COVID, like remote work and things like that. Right, right. Um, so yeah, being able opening the door up, uh, giving a lot of people opportunity, uh, <laughs> taking risks is a big thing in casting, uh, especially nowadays. Making sure you get give people opportunities. Mm -hmm. um like just like Griffin was just saying I wouldn't say that there was anyone before I got into the industry that necessarily <clears throat> inspired me there are people that kind of what um uh Griffin was saying that I admired and that I loved their work but I wouldn't say that I mean because how I see it is there are many people in this industry that inspire me um, now that I know them personally and also admire their performances. Um, the first name that immediately comes to mind is Steve Bloom. I've known Steve for a long mm. time and he is a wonderful human being and also a tremendous actor. Mm. Um, Patrick Seitz being one of them. Patrick is one of my dearest friends and he's also incredibly talented. Mike McFarland, the voice of uh, Jean Kirstein and Master Roshi. And he was also the director of Attack on Titan. He is unbelievably talented um, and he's an amazing director. Um, and Patrick, Patrick, I've worked with as a director for so long that he just, he just creates art. He mm -hmm. just creates gold. Um, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn is, is an actress that I have loved for such a long time. She is incredible. I could just listen to her speak all day. Uh, let's see, who else? Um, there are so many people. Uh, Matt is, is a good friend of mine. And I, I don't remember if I know him from Titan. I don't remember. I'm, I know I've known him longer than Titan, but... Uh, Matt is also incredibly talented, as Jonah has mentioned. Um, who else? <laughs> there's just, there's so many people. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily like, oh, this person drove me to want to voice act or this person. It's, it's more of, I'm an actor and this is another field of acting that I right. chose to go into that I wanted to do. And I happen to have met many amazing people along the way mm. and they are, they now inspire me, if that makes sense. So do, do you guys have like, uh, like a favorite Japanese voice actor or any like a Japanese anime voice yeah, actor? Yes. Suda -san. Who? Yes. I love, um, I, I can't, I, I cannot pronounce his name because I know I'm going to mess it up, but he's been in so many of my favorite shows, but he was the best one that people might know is Kakashi. Uh, oh the voice actor, yeah, yeah, yeah. For oh god, what was um, his name? Uh, it's Kazu. I want to say Kazu, Kazu I I can't. I don't want to butcher it. I don't. Oh, you know um, Kazuhiko. That's it. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He is. Oh my gosh. Just anything. He. He. He's absolutely amazing. Um, I know Naka. Or I'm sorry, Nonaka I would probably be the proper way to say it, yeah. but she is my Japanese counterpart for Kyoko from Madoka Magica, mm. and she is incredibly talented, and she's also the sweetest. She is so cute. Um, we got along really well, and we now consider each other friends. You know, we're friends on social media. It's wonderful. Um, and I I do not remember her name. Um, but the actress that played um, Sailor Uranus in the original Japanese of Sailor Moon. Mm. Oh my gosh. I could, I just love her. I love her voice so yeah. much. Um, and the actor that plays um, many different roles, like Aaron from Attack on Titan. Uh, he was also. Oh, you can get. Oh, Kajuyuki. Uh -huh. Yeah, Kajuyuki. Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. He is absolutely amazing. And uh, he's just, he's so incredibly talented. Uh, so yeah, there are many say you that I love that I mm. absolutely love. Um, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jonah? Uh, Suda Kenjiro Tsurusan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He is uh my vocal counterpart to several characters. Um, I voice uh, a few a few characters that he voices, <laughs> especially on on a Netflix stuff. Uh, uh, House Husband Tatsu. Mm. Um, he voices Johnny Bolt and Super Crooks uh, and several others that uh, we share. And um, he's just cool. He's just a celebrity. Like he's he's neat. He, I, he I just like, has like, I like such I like, like a, a velvety person. voice, right? Like it's it just yeah, it just a sounds great good. actor. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, what about you, Griffin? 
I, not, I don't have a seiyu in mind, but I love uh, Kiryu, Kiryuki Taga, uh, Tagawa. Mm. Um, he's really great. He's the guy who played uh, in, in Mortal Kombat, Your Soul is Mine. Yeah. Uh, that guy. <laughs> Yeah, I so know he him. Does, yeah, he's I great. Know him. He's very, um, he's, he's a, really, he's, really talented. He is a beautiful, beautiful human. Actually, funny story, really quick about about him, really quick. Um, <clears throat> we I we were guests at a convention, and I don't know if you guys know this in chat, but maybe you guys know this because I'm pretty sure we're around the same age. But he was also the grandfather in Johnny Tsunami, the original Disney Channel movie, oh. Johnny Tsunami. And, Holy crap. Yeah. We've and, referenced that three times in the last like three months for some reason. Really? That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, we were a guest together at a convention and I met him and I, and I happened to say, you know, I love your work. I have to tell you, you know, uh, we were, oh, that's right. We were at dinner and I told him, you know, I, this might sound ridiculous to you because it was such a simple movie, but I loved you as, as Johnny's grandpa and Johnny Tsunami. And I've never seen someone's face light up so much as it did. And he just says, really? And I said, yes. And he says, that's my favorite role that I've ever played. Whoa, and I'm like, what? And he, and he says, well, because, and he's, he's a very Zen kind person. And he was yeah. very much like, well, you know, I, I play a lot of villains and, 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 you know, villains are fun, but, but in Johnny Tsunami, I got to be myself. And I'm like, oh my God, my <laughs> heart. So I've never, I've never forgotten that. That's so and, cute. and I just, oh, he's he's a beautiful human being. Beautiful human being. So I can't stress that enough. Anyway, I'm sorry. I just had to tell that story. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that's that's such a that's such a cute story. Yeah. Um, okay. Awesome. Uh mm-hmm. I guess next question is from Philip, who says, Well, this is an interesting one. If you would be part of the Beastars universe, would you be Predator or Prey, and why? Why would you willingly make yourself Prey? Right? <laughs> that seems yeah, illogical. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, the society's kind of built for, for Prey, though. I mean, when yeah. you think about it, like, it's built to protect you and, and, and kind of uplift you. I would be Predator, though. I'd be a cat of some kind, probably a snow leopard. You are a cat. Let's just be real. You are a, a German cat. Shepherd. German yeah, Shepherd. Shepherd? German Aww. Shepherd. Jonah Grey Wolf is a German little Shepherd. too much to deal with, I think. I... German Shepherd is a nice round, you know, encapsulated kind of thing. It's not too big, not too small. Great fur. I'd, I'd still be a predator. I'd be a predator, but I'd still be a wolf just because I think wolves are gorgeous and they're beautiful creatures. So, Chat has a good option. Honey badger. Honey badger. Honey yeah. badger. Yeah. The because apex. they don't give a... <laughs> the, the apex yeah. predator. They stink, though. Pretty sure they stink. They smell real bad. I'm, sh- I'm yeah. sure most of the animals stink, though, to be fair. That's true. Most animals <laughs> don't smell great. Cats? Yeah. No, cats, they, they groom themselves, so they smell great. We get it, Griffin. You love cats. Love cats. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and then... <laughs> and then I guess we can, make this, uh, we can make this the final question, because uh, we're, we're running out of time. But uh, you know okay. what? This, this one's super simple and yet we, it's probably the one question that uh i i hate getting asked at conventions because i can just go off forever on this but what's oh, your yeah. favorite anime i hate this question <laughs> so much it's the one no, thing well, it's the one thing i like asked eat anime in my room uh funny enough i actually asked joey this before we started the stream i was like joey what's your favorite anime and I, I was um, like, it's B stars, not because I'm Beastars. contractually obligated to say that. <laughs> yeah, they're paying me money to say B stars. Yeah, definitely. So my my favorite anime for the longest time was uh, an older anime show that many people in chat may not know. It's called Fushigi Yugi. Uh, oh wow! That was definitely one of my yeah, favorites. Deep. Yep, I love it because I'm a rom a rom a rom I'm a romantic at heart. And I, I, I really liked Fushigi Yugi. Um, I also loved Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon was the first anime series that I was introduced to when I was a kid. Uh, so it's kind of funny that I'm now a part of it. Uh, and right now I have to say, like in this moment, in this moment, my favorite anime is Attack on Titan. Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Because it's... Uh, it's on a whole other level. I, I truly think that both Beastars 
and Attack on Titan are anime shows that will never, can, nothing can ever be like them. Hmm. Um, I yeah. truly, I, I truly agree. Think I they're agree. unique. I they're agree. very unique. 86 is trying real hard to be Attack on Titan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. They can try. They can try. <laughs> but um, no, Attack on Titan is, is you know, I, I was binge watching the seasons leading up to season four because I wanted to be up to date when uh, we started recording. Hmm. And I just was watching it and I just was enamored. I was enamored by the performances of this show and where the story went and how intense it is. And just, it's amazing. Like I, I, I just, it's so good. It's amazing. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, what about you, Jonah? What's your favorite anime? My favorite, uh, people who watch my stream know this, but my favorite anime, uh, of all time, me just like, the, the the reason it's my favorite is because it's the first anime that I found, watched, and like it ingested completely by myself. There was no social media influence. There was no influencer telling me to watch this top 10 anime. There was nothing like that. It was just me finding it and then figuring out a way to watch it because it resonated a lot of, uh, I like cowboys. I like space operas. I like uh, steampunk and things like that. So mm. I loved Trigun. Um, oh, Trigun! The, Trigun is, is, is one of my favorite yeah. shows. The honorable mentions are Attack on Titan, One Piece, Naruto, yeah. uh, you know, the old standbys. But mm. uh, the wild card, my favorite, is t totally Trigun. I absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. Trigun's just, like, dripping with style. Like, even today, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's so cool. Definitely. So cool. Yeah. Johnny, so cool. Johnny's amazing. Johnny's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. As and Ash. I watched the first, I watched it in dub first, and then I went back to watch the sub, and it was great. But, Bash um, the Stampede. Bash the Stampede. Bash the Stampede. Uh, what about you, Griffin? What's your favorite anime? Um, I have a lot of shows that I like, but I think over the years I've realized that I really like film, and I really love anime film. I love working on them. Uh, like my goal, my dream is to write and direct uh for an anime film mm. um because what's great about film is that you it's because it's only two hours it has to be so tight and what you do visually and and through the music and through the story has to be so you, like there can be no fat one thing about series that inevitably happens even <laughs> I, even series where i'm like oh it's so it's perfect what always happens is you have to pad it out you have yeah. to stretch it out yeah. to fit the 20 minute episode, the 13 se episode season, season one, two, three. And there's inevitably a part of the season where you're like, yeah, you can skip this part. Or I didn't like that opening and this and that. And um, so I, I just find that a really, really solid film. Uh, anyway, so uh, my favorite anime film and I probably my favorite anime uh, and dub is the Garden of Words. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm, oh, man. Yeah, it is That's so a good choice. If, if you've not seen it. Uh, watch it when it's a rainy day or you're sick, stuck in bed, put on some really nice headphones or if you have really good speakers and watch the dub. I am telling you, it is the greatest dub I've ever seen in my life. And it's so, if you guys get that kind of tingle from ASMR, you're going to get that with this movie. Some, I don't know what they Ooh. did, but all of the actors are so, are so like intimate and so quiet and it's so subtle. Like they're not trying to do anything with, with their dialogue or with what they're saying. They're just like, they're just speaking. And it's so amazing. I've never seen a dub like, and I've 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 seen a couple of dubs that have kind of gotten close. <laughs> NYAV post gets likes going for that more filmic sound, but nothing has scratched the surface when it comes to Garden of Words and, and the dub and how good it is. And mm. it's a shorter movie. It's around forty five minutes, fifty minutes mm. long. So it's um it's a short it's a I guess technically a short film, but it is so so <laughs> so good. And you have to watch it in the dub. And you got to just like sit with a blanket and and watch it. It is um, who's in it, Griffin. It's a, it was a, a Sentai dub, so not oh. a whole lot of people that I recognize. There is a I I know yeah, and it there are a couple people in it who play supporting characters and that that I recognize, but all the main cast I don't um I, I, I've never worked with. Mm -hmm. But um oh. yeah, it was um I I mean I could talk for hours and hours and how perfect that film. <laughs> and it has the added benefit talking about like kind of trimming the fat and all that because it's 45 minutes yeah like, right so tight it's so perfect there's not an ounce of like of fluff on that on that thing and it is so well done and we'll uh, talk about some of our yeah. favorite dubs i love samurai champloo that is a yeah aces uh cowboy bebop is an old standby sure. um 
Uh, uh, Steve, any, I mean, Steve Bloom is just fantastic in both of those. That you're like, what? Sorry, what, Joey? Oh, I was just saying, Steve Bloom is fantastic in both of those. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's yeah. crazy to believe in yeah. Bloom's first roles. Uh, you know, I, I sound like a broken record, but Attack on Titan, like, it's just the yeah, dub is, Attack on Titan's pretty good. It's just so good. And, and I'm not, I, excuse, like, I'm excluding myself from that, meaning, I'm paying attention to the other cast members, but it's, it's just so, it's so amazing. Um, but there, I'm trying to think of other ones that I just, I fell in love with. Um, there's just so many. There's so, I think, so uh, many shows. my, my personal favorite dub is probably Penny and Stalking just because it's so of course it is. ridiculous. Of course it is. Like that's one of the few shows <laughs> where I thought the dub was just infinitely better than the original just because of because because i when i watched it i i saw clips of it as in the dub and i legitimately thought it was like a cartoon network show just because of how like yeah. of the art yeah. style and yeah. how like how well the, the the english voices were matching perfectly with the show and it's like and then i realized oh shit it's an anime um yeah and i was like and i was like oh my god this this is insane so good well, they, they definitely steered away because I, I if I remember correctly, because I never saw the original Japanese, but in the original Japanese, I don't think they were. Would you say they weren't as raunchy <laughs> as the. As yeah, the I mean, you know, <laughs> Japanese just as a language is definitely not as crass as English can right. get. Yeah. And, you know, that right. show is like the definition of crass. So it's like, yes, you know, when <laughs> when like the F word is flying left and right in the dub, it's it definitely fits a lot better than you know the more i guess polite but not as polite japanese if that makes sense yeah 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 i know 100 sure. yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah i mean like garden of words i think is in my opinion i think it's one of the most underrated shinkai films um it's yeah it was before he really broke out with your name and all that but mm. yeah it's such it's so good it's yeah. oh i remembered i remembered a dub from a movie that i loved and that is wolf children oh yeah oh yeah that's wolf classic. children is excellent i love wolf children ah uh, it's just it's gorgeous film yeah gorgeous, definitely gorgeous beautiful film, film. Mm -hmm. it, i cry every time i watch it oh yeah so. of course of course yeah um yeah but uh i guess that's gonna do it for this interview um thank you uh, <clears throat> everyone for joining and thank you all in the chat for coming along as well um by the way uh, Streamly right now is doing a uh, little thing where you guys can get prints uh, of a bunch of B Star stuff. Yes. Uh, I think my <laughs> mod has been spamming that in the chat recently. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So if you'd like hey. to check that out, um, please go check it out. Uh, I also have my prints as well that I'm signing uh, personally as well. So you can check those out as well if you would like. Uh, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jonah um, Griffin. Oh, I'm thing. sorry, Jonah. Yeah. Can we can we go down the line and give our socials and everything? Yes, and... yes, yes. Please, uh, oh, if you guys want to shout out anything, please do it right now. Time time for self promo. Uh, go yes, for it. Only because I will forget otherwise. Yeah, go um, for it. You guys, you guys can follow me on Twitter. It's uh, Lauren underscore A underscore Landa. Uh, but also, you can find me on Twitch right here on Twitch. Uh, just Lauren Landa, one word. I've already noticed that quite a few of you have been following me throughout the entire uh, stream, so I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I have voice actor panels, voice actor guests. I also chat. I also game. I do all of that. So please give me a follow. And also, I just heard someone follow me just now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, don't forget to hit that notification button because otherwise you won't know when we go live. Exactly. Um, also, an announcement about Streamly is originally I was going to be signing this Sunday, but due to scheduling conflicts, um, I will be doing the B-Star Streamly signing on April 9th, Saturday, April 9th at one o'clock on my Twitch channel. But instead, what's going to happen on Sunday is my Annie Leonhardt cosplay stream. Uh, hey. oh, nice. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you will see a little preview of what it's going to look like. Uh, it was a sub goal and we did it and it's in honor of the final season. So yes, please give me a follow on my Twitch channel, just Lauren Landa and please give me a follow on Lauren underscore a underscore Landa and I'm done. Please someone take over. <laughs> <laughs> How was you guys like? Uh, I, yeah. I'm a Twitch streamer. That's like half my income. He's a gamer. So I'm a gamer, dude. I'm a gamer chat. I'm going to be streaming tonight actually in like an hour or so. Um, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Jonas Scoot, J-O-N-A-H-S-C-O-O-T. Um, some of my mods are even in Joey's chat. 
Uh, so they'll probably drop a link or something like that. Other than that, you can find me on Twitter. I do casting announcements. I do stream announcements. I do all memes and <clears> shit <throat> on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at I'm Mr. Transistor. I M M R Transistor. So complicated, um, Jonah. That's my stuff. I want to change it, but then I have to change it everywhere. And it's yeah. like, eh. I feel that. I want to dedicate myself to that. I don't know. Griffin, are you as lazy as I am? Uh, you can find me. <laughs> You can just search my name and find me. Yeah. No, I've changed mine. It's all just my name. Uh, you can find me in the real world, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> a weird. But uh, yeah, just just my name, Griffin Puwati. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Um, and yeah, of course, uh, please, everyone in the chat who hasn't already followed these three, please go do that right now. Give them your support and love because they definitely deserve it. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, oh, guys. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. there's one more thing. There's what's up? one more thing. What's up? What's up? And also, for those of you who live close to the Sacramento area, oh, right. you Sac can Anime. meet all three of us at Sac Anime on Easter weekend, which is April 15th to the 17th. Oh, nice. So if you want to meet us and if you want to get an autograph or get something signed, then you can see us there because it's going to be the first time. The very first time that all three of us are at a convention yep. together. Is uh this was or this was engineered. This was orchestrated. Damn. <laughs> it was. Yes. Yeah. So please come by and see us. I'm sorry, Joey. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, like, no, Wait, no. There's one more. No, thing. no, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So go check that out, guys, if you're in the area. Um. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Jonah, Griffin, Lauren, for coming to hang out. Of course, man. Thank yeah, you for thanks. having us. Yeah. Super fun. Hopefully we can talk again soon. And uh, thank you yeah. guys for thank watching happy, this, this stream. Um, I will be off now. I'm going to bed because it's like super <laughs> early in the morning. But <laughs> yeah, dude, you look tired, man. Yeah, no, it, no. But it was it was lovely talking to you guys, and uh, I I learned a lot definitely well. about this uh about this world. So thank you very much, guys, and uh, awesome. see you guys in the next stream. All right, bye. Thanks. Bye, chat. Bye, everyone. Bye.